Hello Skippy lovers, uh, welcome to my almost alien track guide to Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, I'll do the normal format, I'll do a lap uh, where I keep pausing, saying a few things, and then I'll run a lap right at the end. First corner is probably one of the most iconic first corners in the world. It's called Paddock Hill Bend. Uh, you approach it on an angle, uh, you slide to the right and downhill. Uh, it's just a roller coaster ride. Um, I've driven this track in real life and I managed to spin once going down here. Um, I nearly uh, presented my lunch uh, to the cockpit. It was amazing. It's just, a, just an incredible corner. Uh, but you need to be precise. You need to break just after the 100 yard board on the left. Aim at the marshal's post on the left. Some people aim at the tyre wall on the right. In fact you could aim anywhere between those. It just depends on how much you're going to rotate the car. But we're going from 5th down to 3rd and we need to be looking at the apex on the right but of course you notice you can't see it you've just got to be looking for it and waiting for it to come and rotating the car waiting to get up on the curve on the right as much as you can so that you can get full on the gas uh, on the exit down the hill it's tricky but it's a lot of fun As you can see, there's a lot of room on the exit of Paddock Hill Bend on the left here, this green Astro turf. Uh, you need to be using it. You don't get an, an off track, so you do need to be using it. You'll get it into fourth whilst you're on this Astro turf, and then you'll be wanging back up the hill towards uh, the next hairpin, which is called Druids. <laughs> Basically, brake as you go under the bridge, and you aim for the letters uh, R and L on the Car Lube sponsorship site, and that's where you aim. Uh, this hairpin, although you can't see it at the moment, is a little bit quicker than you think. Um, I've been knocking it down to first, some use second. I think first is good because it just helps you rotate the car at the apex just that little bit. clearly uh, yeah you need to be getting up to third just before that white line and getting the car over to the right here ready for this corner which is called Graham Hill Bend um, it's actually been modified since I drove here in the early 90s it's a bit tighter now uh, but you do have to um, break in a straight line as much as you can it's the first of the tricky left-handers and it sucks you into braking a bit too late and then you end up losing it um, over the curbing on the right so get the braking done nice and early and just be patient because it's a left-hander this car is not as good as left-handers you need to be just ever so sensitive with the throttle, but get the wheels up on the left hand curb so that you can use all the curb on the right. Now you'll notice here that uh, I've gone all the way over the red and white curbing and onto this sort of large section of what looks like a giant Rye Vita uh, biscuit. You need to be on this, you won't get an off track. Everyone that's quick around here will be on this, and the trick now is to get off it as quick as we can without actually running into the grass at the end. But if you're not on this, you ain't doing a quick lap. This next corner is called Surtees, named after the great John Surtees, the only man to win the world title on two and four wheels. How he's not a sir, I don't know. Um, you basically brake just after the uh, green and white sign on the barrier on the right. We're going from fourth down to second, and we're going to be turning in a little bit later than it looks at the moment. Again, it's about getting the car rotated and getting on the power as soon as you can uh, with the car straight. This corner is very important to have the car pointing in the correct angle to get you down the straight because if there's any waiting to be done or understeer, it's, it's generally not a good thing. Uh, you don't need to run over these curbs on the right as much as you perhaps think you should. Um, if you've got the exit to Surtees uh, correct, uh, you won't need to run over these curbs and actually if you do you'll end up on the grass a lot of the time. But, uh, now we're just going to go down the straight which is just, I don't know how long it is but it's a long time so not much happening. This right-hander is called Hawthorns, brilliant fast right-hander. We're in fifth and we'll be dropping, dropping it down to fourth, breaking it around about the 50-yard marker on the left. Uh, and we're just going to be a little bit patient off the gas, just waiting for the car to settle into the apex 
Uh, we want to be tight up to the curbing on the right, not riding over it, and then get back onto full power. And it's all about the exit. We don't want to be using the curb on the left on exit too much. There's not much of it, uh, and it unsettles the car. You'll have time probably to look at your speedo. You'll probably be doing 90, 91, 92 at exit of the curb on the left. That means you've done this corner at a decent speed. <laughs> This next corner, I believe, is called Westfield. Uh, we're going to be braking at the 50-yard bo board, um, or between the green and white stripey sign and the 50-yard board, knocking it down into third and using as much of this right-hand corner curb as we can. There's a bit of Rivita on the right of the red and white bars, which you can use. Don't get too greedy, but you can use more than you think at the moment. And again, there's room on the exit to run out. So this is about braking not too much, just enough to get the car turned in, Run over as much of the curb as you can on the right, run on the exit as much as you can to the left, and getting back on that gas as hard as you can, ready to go up the next hill. I got a bit leery there, but got away with it. We're now going to go down the hill and up to the right into uh, Sheen's Corner, I think it's called now. It used to be called Dingle Dell, I believe. Uh, this is a very, very exciting right-hander coming up. We basically keep the car following the curve of the road on the left and we're going to have to brake gently, knock it down one gear into third and turn right uh, blind basically and it's hard. If you see the curb before you start turning you've left it too late so this is one of those great corners where you can't see it the first time you go around it so you'll never be as quick as you can be first time so you just keep having to have goes and goes at it and eventually you'll get a feel for where the apex is because you just can't see it. So tough shit, you just got to do your best. Turn right um, over the curb, use as much of it as you can, and you'll probably need to snick it into fourth on exit. <laughs> the trouble with that corner is, as you can see on the left, there's absolutely no curbing at all. And if you put the tyres on that grass, um, you're having an interesting ride. We're coming up now to, um, I can't think of the name of this corner, Sterling's, I think. Uh, we're going to break at the 50 yard board on the right, drop it down one gear. This is an interesting left hander because uh, you need to be careful as you rotate the car. Uh, it's very easy to over rotate it here, but this corner in the apex is actually banked slightly, so you can actually go around it a little quicker than you think. <laughs> Try and use as much curb on the inside the apex as you can, but don't use too much curb on exit because you'll go flying onto the grass again. You need to use some of it, but don't go crazy because it, it runs down to an area where there's not very much of it, as you can see, coming up. Now we're coming up to Clearways, the final corner, uh, quite an epic right-hander. Very tempting to knock it into fifth uh, just before the 50-yard board. You probably can, but I've been leaving it in fourth. So we brake just before the 50 yard board, start turning at the uh, escape road here on the left and we're getting in, getting into the apex on the right as much as we can. Again another slightly blind right hander but you need to be braking a bit harder than you have been doing at most of the other corners just to get the car rotated and pointing in the correct direction so that you can get it full on the gas for the exit. <laughs> If you if you are running too close to the grass on the left, uh, that's not a good thing. You won't need to if you've done that corner properly. You'll have quite a lot of track to work with, and now you can just track over to the right to uh, take the shortest route to the this. Well, you can't call it a straight because it's curved as anything, but obviously you want to be taking a straighter line through there as you can, ready for the start finish line. <laughs> A lot of people hug the pit wall and then move out to the left uh, for paddock, but I don't, strictly speaking I don't think you have to. You can probably start drifting over now, um, but in real life you'll see a lot of people hug the pit wall. Um, it's very slopey. With my camera set to the horizon, locked to the horizon, hopefully you've been able to see the genuine, uh, the general sort of lie of the land, which is it's basically a, the whole track's off camera and it's hilly as anything and it's uh, in real life it's a, it's a brilliant track to drive. It's lots and lots of fun.
So that was a 40.2, uh, sort of semi-decent lap. That's the whole point of Almost Alien. I'm not setting world record times. just want to set good competitive times and, and show you the way around. So as promised, uh, as promised, I'll run the lap full on again. There you go, Skippy Lovers. Hope that was helpful. See you on the track this week. Bye.